Hi, you're tuned in to The Hottest Thing on Campus, Radio Heatwave. My name is Waymo. My name is Bradley. And right now, we have Axel Brizzy, a local rapper on the call with us today. Welcome to the show. What's up? Thank you guys for having me. And yeah, it's great to be back on the Radio Heatwave, even though it's through a Zoom call. You know, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Quarantine days. We hope we to do, yeah. yeah, we hope yeah. to do an interview in our studio one day with you. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Everything goes well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how's your day today? It's been fine. I just woke up, watched some YouTube videos, ate, and here I am. And then, yeah, just prepared myself and I'm here. Classic day. Short day. <laughs> quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same Classic thing. quarantine day. Yeah, are you excited for phase two? I am because uh, I'm enlisting into the army on 2nd July. So I was oh. praying very hard that phase two will come earlier so I could go out. If not, I'll be cooped up at home all the way to uh. NS, you know. So now that phase two is coming tomorrow, at least I get to go out for a bit, you know. Fresh air, whatever, before I go to NS, so I'm ready for that. See, well, good luck yeah, for yeah. your NS. Yeah, thank all the so best. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Congratulations oh, yeah, on your latest release, Leap of Faith. We love thank it. You. And thank it's you. a song that touches on your deepest thoughts and emotions. So, could you share with us more about this? All right, so we Leap of Faith, right? Actually, the whole song started um, as a school project because I was in Diploma in Music and Audio Technology in SP. So for our final year project, we need, to, we need to do four singles, you know? And Leap of Faith was the first single that I came out with because with the final year project, there was no guidelines, you know? You could do whatever song you want as long as they vary from one another, very sound, sounded different, genre is different, you could go ahead with it. And Leap of Faith is a song that I've always wanted to do in terms of um, how it sounded, the instruments that was used, you know, and stuff like that. So I took that opportunity and then I worked on it, you know. So it was something that was done in school and in my bedroom, which is, you know, right here. So um, yeah, no studio, no high end, whatever. Everything was done at home. So for me, I think it was, it's a very personal song for me because the sound wise, it's, I think just the instrumental itself, the keys, you know, the jazz chords and everything we put in is very, just by listening to it, you feel very um, in tune with it in a way like it's a lo-fi stuff. It makes you want to listen to the lyrics, you know. So yeah, I, it's very honest because on the lyrics, I felt like with how the song sounded like just the instrumental, I had to bring a certain aspect of honesty and truth with it. So yeah, that's what I did. I, I felt like I really wore my heart on my sleeve for this one. And really spoke my truth, you know, talk about my family, talk about my plans, you know, and yeah, I think the whole song really came out how I wanted it to come out and, you know, to make it extra personal and special, um, it's my first song that I produced, mixed and mastered myself. So to me, that's amazing, you know, to have all that control over it, it's amazing. So yeah. Nice. So um, you collaborated with Billy Macbeth on this track. So how did that collaboration happen? So, uh, BD Macbeth is actually from my course. She's my senior. Uh, oh. Not many people knew. And I didn't know till like I was in my last year. I was like, oh, so Beth is BD Macbeth. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> so I met her at a songwriting camp. And from there on, uh, we just kept in contact. And she hit me up one day in my DMs talking about working on a collaboration together. I was like, cool. And then I was thinking about, wait, I have Leap of Faith and I was looking for a female singer. And I needed someone with a very powerful and soulful voice and someone who can do, you know, the choir stuff and so on and so forth. And I just thought that Beth, uh, Beating Me Beth, with her, with her personal music style is very, I mean, it just is like one, one and one goes together, you know, like whatever her style and my, my music, you know, for Leap of Faith, it goes together really well. So I just hit her up with Leap of Faith too and then she loved it. She liked the message behind it and she stood behind it. So she was like, yeah, I'll get on the song. And yeah, I just gave her, uh, I just, she's, she's really good because I just gave her rhyme schemes and also words that I want to use in the chorus. I threw it to her, like, please use these words. Uh, you, know, you know where the direction of the song is going, so I trust you to come up with an awesome chorus, you know. And she did. She wrote everything. She just used everything that I gave her. She wrote the song. She recorded everything in her house. Even the choir, it was just her. Everything was just her. So that was amazing. Wow. Yeah, so wow. yeah, it was great working with her. That's that's crazy. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. When yeah. I first heard it, I was like, wow, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-800 Leap of Faith t-shirt dropped a few yeah. days ago in line with the song's release. Um, why did you decide to do this? I felt like since it's my comeback single in a way, since uh, One and O came out in like March 2019, I needed something else to sort of push and show the importance of this comeback single, you know, and I felt like what better way to come back with then with merch you get what i mean because the last time i did merch last year uh we sold it out pretty quick and also because we did 
general orders. So we got the sizes in advance before we sold it, right? Not many people managed to get their sizes. So this time when I came back with a shirt, I was like, this shirt needs to capture uh, what I feel with this new song. And the reason why I chose white is because I feel like white represents a blank canvas, a clean slate. You know, you start over as an artist and I feel like um, it captures the purity of the song too with the color white. That's why we didn't go with black or anything else. I felt like white was the perfect color for this. And with the whole one eight zero zero leap of faith, um, it was from the artwork because the artwork you saw it was like a tear out flyer, right? You know, literally like take a leap of faith. It's like a literal metaphor, you know, take a leap of faith. And <laughs> usually when you look at a tear out flyer in public, there's a number for you to contact or like a email for you to contact, right? Like if you're interested, please hit us up. So uh, my designer Edward, he came up with um, the number. He's like, let's put something there so people can contact us with. And yeah, one is usually for faith. He came up with it. It was handwritten actually, so it's not like a font or anything. He 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 wrote that with his hand. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, to me, it looked good. And it captures the concept of how I want Leap of Faith to be like a self-help song. You know, when you feel down, when you feel like you're not motivated, you need the extra push, then Leap of Faith can act as that helpline in a way. Obviously, it's not as powerful as a helpline, but you get what I mean, you know, it acts yeah. as yeah. a little push as a helpline, you know. So yeah, I felt like the shirt, people like the concept, people like the idea, and yeah, it's doing pretty well with sales, and I'm very happy that this shirt is coming out real soon. That's a, that's a beautiful meaning. Yeah, behind the song. Okay, yeah, yeah. so Axel, I believe congratulations are in order as well. Um, your song Thursday hit 1 million streams just last week. <laughs> and it also won the Best Song to Sing Along To Award in yeah, the yeah, Youth yeah. Music Awards 2019. Did you ever think that this collaboration would reach this level of success? Uh, to be honest, right, I knew the song would get some sort of traction because of how unique it was, you know, uh, future based with R&B, you know, it's it's something that's, you don't really hear, you know, you get what I mean? Like, if I were to pinpoint a song that was like, oh, yeah, whatever, right? The main concept that we got or the idea that we got for Thursday was from Best Part by Daniel Caesar, you know, the style of oh, the male and okay. female, yeah, okay. and then singing like yeah. acoustic thing. But wait, it took that to another level. We added a future bass drop in the chorus and then, you know, different <laughs> elements. So I feel like the way of how it sounds, how unique it was, I, I expected some sort of traction, but definitely not one million streams, you know, because I'm an independent artist, you know, no big labels, no nothing, right? So for me to achieve that kind of accolade to me, it's very impressive to myself. It's like a pat on my back to keep going and, you know, tell myself that, yeah, I'm on the right path, you get what I mean? So yeah, it's very encouraging for me, definitely. Congratulations, yeah. man. Thank you, yeah. thank you so much. Who would you say is your biggest aspiration in music? I think music-wise, my favorite artist. You know, every time I come on Radio Heatwave, you ask me who's your favorite <laughs> artist. Who's your? It's it's always Childish Gambino because of you know <laughs> how how you listen to his music, um, his albums and everything. The sounds are always different, you know, and that's yeah. something that I, I aspire to do. Even the same as uh, this rapper X X X Tentacion, you know, mm. um, his style varies a lot, you know, and I took a lot of inspiration from his songs, you know, especially his Seventy EP, you know, the Lo-Fi stuff, and I did yeah. a song All You Need is very similar, you know, vibe wise. So. I feel like these artists who are able to show their versatility, they are able to do different styles. These are the kind of artists that inspire me all the time. Oh yeah, another artist is Russ, R-U-S-S. Oh, okay. Russ. Yeah, because he's, he's, a, he's an artist that um, produces, makes masters and arrange and does everything by himself, writes his own lyrics too. And that's what I aspire to be too, you know. And Leap of Faith is my first step, literally my first Leap of Faith towards being that kind of artist, you know. So yeah, that's, that's my three. Nice. Okay, so moving on, uh, you have done multiple collaborations with different artists such as Yao, Marian Carmel, Abby, and more. So, which track would you say is your all-time favorite? Uh, Leap of Faith, right off the bat. <laughs> Leap of Faith, it has to be. <laughs> so, I feel like the BT Macbeth one has to be my favorite just because of how it was done, you know. It was only me and her and a few other sessionists and we were very in touch with each other in the process. You know, it was very personal and... I think we shed some sort of wall between us for us to be able to write the lyrics and put it out like that, you know. So, I love Thursday. I love Wanna Know. I love um, Time and everything like that. But I felt like at some point, because there were so many people in the studio and people were involved in this and that, it wasn't as personal as it should be, you know. Thursday was personal. It was about love and everything. But with Leap of Faith, it just touches a little nerve because, like, it's personal and it's about a career and you know your life from here here on there out that kind of thing so people faith for sure for me 
on top of all the artists you've collaborated with, which other local artists would you want to collaborate with? Oh, I have a lot of friends. I've, I've made friends over the past few months just on social media and I even have like friends in the scene I'm very close to, close to you know, and one of the rappers I want to work with definitely is Stingy Boy because we stay really close. We play FIFA together all the time. It's just about time we need to work on a song together, you know. <laughs> and we do have a lot of unreleased songs together. We even did the G-Shock song together. So yeah, it's about time, you know, I have to get on a song with him and put something out. So he's definitely one of them. Um, if I had to work with a singer that's not a rapper, I'm trying to think. Because I want to work with Yao again. I feel like I want to know what's good. We just need another one, you know. So I want to work with Yao again. But I worked with him before. Who else? Oh, I'm going to work with this other artist. His name is Tias Iglesias. So oh, I don't okay. think many people have heard of him. But he has an amazing tone to me. And we have a song together already. So it's going to come out real soon. Oh, that's okay. nice. Yeah. It's a lot of projects going on, going on, like yeah. happening in the background. <laughs> yes, yes. Over the few years in, as an artist, you have performed on many stages. So, what would your dream stage be? I have two because I've been thinking about this. I'm like, should it be like a solo concert, you know, a huge stadium, like how you know certain people do and you fill out the space or headlining a festival? Because I feel like headlining a festival shows that, you know, like, wow, you've achieved so much. And among all these artists here, you're headlining. That shows, you know, the proper growth. But I would say like, looking at the Coachella performance years after years through live stream. If I could perform on a stage like that, that amazing with that kind of production, you know, not saying I'm ready for it anytime soon because I have a lot of improving and growing to do, but if I can be on a stage like that with dancers and, you know, a whole production, it would definitely be amazing for me, you know. Yeah, I agree. Iconic. I agree. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> You've had a couple of mentor figures in the past, right? Such as John Chua and uh, Hisham Tha MC. What is the best piece of advice they have given you? I think the best uh, piece of advice definitely was from Hisham because when I just started rapping, he was one of Singapore's like pioneers for better rap. And I, I watched his videos and how many up and coming underground rappers in Singapore did better rap and stuff like that on YouTube. And now to be friends with them, you know, it's like a full circle for me. You know, I watch them and then I'm friends with them. I even have songs with them. But with Hisham, um, he's, with, he's in Finger Fung, if you guys don't know. You know, he's a rapper in Finger Fung. Mm -hmm. And... He's very technical with his rap. So when he took me in like a mentee, you know, as a friend and as a mentee and he saw potential with me, he taught me a lot of technicalities with hip hop and with writing hip hop, like writing lyrics and writing raps that I never knew, you know. So he taught me, um, you know, pop punchlines, metaphors, wordplay, you know, rhyme schemes, multi-syllable rhyming, like a bunch of stuff that I feel like without him, I wouldn't have held so closely to me today and make sure that every one of my verses delivered exactly those things, you know. So definitely, I felt like Hisham gave me the best advice so far about, you know, writing my lyrics and I hold it to me very closely to today. Do you still contact him? <laughs> oh, for sure. We talk often enough and I keep telling him like, yo, Finger Fung and Axel Reason, they do music together. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, one day. I love Finger Fung too. That would be, that would be crazy. Like the mentor yeah. and the mentee making music together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be cool. You are the youngest local rapper to have topped the local iTunes hip hop chart with your debut album and number two for the overall iTunes chart behind Charlie Puth. So once again, congratulations on that. Thank you. And thank you. What Congrats. would you say to young aspiring local artists trying to reach that goal? I would say um, don't be afraid because that, that whole like accolade or milestone for me happened in 2018, I would say, before Thursday came out. So that was even before I had Thursday, the one million song, you know, so <laughs> like it, it just goes to show and most of the songs in that EP actually was recorded in a random space, like a bedroom and stuff. So not all of them were done in the studio too, you know, and for me to achieve that milestone as an up and coming rapper, at the time I was only... How was I? 20? 19? I, got, I was about 19, 20. I can't remember, but it was about there, you know. And I feel like I was always a very shy person, especially when it came to music. But, you know, I had to force myself to take that extra step and be more of an extrovert when it comes to doing music because, you know, networking and everything is very important. So, yeah, I would say to every artist out there, aspiring young artist, if you're shy, if you're not shy as in shy MP3, but <laughs> if you're shy, if you're a shy person, <laughs> if you're an introvert, you know, you always, you know, I know you can be shy, you don't want to show people your music, but if you don't post it online and you don't take the next step, then, you know, basically take the leap of faith, you know, throw it out there, you know, get people to listen to it. Whether or not it's good or bad, you know that constructive criticism will always come with it. You can always improve. You know, not everybody's like amazing on the first try. So even for me, I have a lot of music that I put out in the past that I'm not very proud of, but without those music that I put out, I wouldn't get to where I am today in terms of improvement mm -hmm. and in terms of growth, you know. So I feel like with my personal 
process, like a lot of people saw growth, especially when Leap of Faith came out, they hear the growth. I sound different, everything, you know, it's just different, you know, the maturity is there. So um, just don't be afraid, put stuff out, don't be afraid to stumble and fall because without feeling, you would never really improve and learn, you know. Right, that's great yeah, advice. So much. Yeah. yeah, that's really great yeah. advice for the future generation. Yes, I hope they take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talking about the future, what does Mr. Breezy have planned in the future? Yeah, so like I said, I'm going to NS 2nd July. So a lot of people will be like, oh no, you won't be, you know, music, whatever. But I'm like, nah, trust. Like, I won't be going off on a hiatus for one year again because I did that already. <laughs> there was a lot of growth. I will not that do it again. That. So yeah, exactly. I will not repeat the same thing again because I feel like enough growth has been done. And I've prepped myself for the past year when I was silent to, you know, really prep more material. So that even when I'm in NS, you know, I can still put music out. So definitely mm. we'll have a bunch of singles coming out this year. There might be a project. I, I think there will be a project, but I don't want to say anything and not release and people will be like, oh, you said this, <laughs> I didn't put it out. Because like, I, I have no one basically running my marketing plan with me about what I can release or what I can't release, you know. So right now, I'm just releasing off my gut feeling. If I feel like putting this out, I'll put it out, you know. Right. Which, yeah. is, yeah, which is the same as Deeper Faith. So with that freedom, I feel like I don't want to abuse it. I want to make, make sure that I'm organized and put out enough singles and projects. But I feel like, yeah, definitely Deeper Faith will not be the last you've heard of me this year and there will be more singles to come. And every one of them, as it comes out, you will hear how different it sounds and not one single will sound the same as the other. And that is great. Like, you're really yeah. hitting along the same path, like, like um, to your inspirations, right? Like, Charlie yeah. Shambino, all that, with the different musics. I think you're going to be really successful, man. Like, Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. Okay. So, now it's time for the quick fire questions round. We're yeah, going to okay. ask you questions really fast. It's going to be quick fire. You can't think. Just off the top of your head. Whatever is that answer, okay? Yeah. Okay, Let's go. so three, two, one, go. If you weren't an artist, what would you be doing? Uh, athlete. I'll do sports, for sure. Oh, yeah, because you were part of your football team in yeah. Yeah, your secondary school. Secondary school, school right? <laughs> yes, yeah. you know, do your research. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... If you could do anything you want for a day, what would it be? Probably want to be in the studio with someone like Childish Gambino or Russ or Drake, you know, and just pick their brains and learn from them, you know. We don't even have to make music together. I just want to see how they are and their energy in the studio and just learn from it, you know. Because I feel yeah. like I still have a lot to learn from, you know, and I still have a lot to mm -hmm. improve on. I'm far from where I want to be. So being in the presence <laughs> of someone that great would definitely do a lot for me. So yeah, if I can do something for a day, that would be it. Okay, next one's a little personal, but what's your guilty pleasure? <laughs> oh man, I play, I think I play games a lot, man. And whenever I play, I feel so guilty because I'm like, man, I'm going to NS. I shouldn't be doing this. I should be doing music first. Then, <laughs> you know, afterwards I can play my game. So my guilty pleasure will be playing FIFA with people like Thingy Boy and my friend Erwin who did my merch with me online every, every other night. So yeah, that's my guilty pleasure. What is one song you wish you wrote and recorded? Oh man, it's this song called Make It Out Alive by this rapper called Quest. Not many people know him because he's very underground and he was signed by Logic, but uh, yeah, Make It Out Alive by Quest because he talked about how, you know, he was struggling doing music and stuff at home and his halfway, his mom was asking him to take out the pork chops and stuff. Like, it's just so relatable and I feel like, you know, every one of us here, we're just trying to chase our dreams and make it out alive. So that's, that's, just, that's the kind of song that I want to write, you know. What hey, would so, you say is your greatest achievement of all time? Oh, my greatest achievement of all, all time? I think through all my accolades and stuff, definitely would be making my parents proud and also, you know, having them support me. To me, that's the greatest achievement of all time because when I started music, they weren't on my side, you know. They weren't supporting me. But over time, when they see the hard work put in, when they see the money come in especially, then they'll be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my son. Let's go, you know. And then they're sharing me on their Facebook, their WhatsApp group. So, but... I mean, as funny as it sounds, right, I'm really happy that I managed to turn their minds into supporting me. So to me, that's my greatest achievement, having my parents on my back. Nice. So it's so great for the public, right? Because like future yeah. generations can like look up to you and say like, hey, ma, pa, look, he's, he's really yeah. successful. I can do it exactly. too. Yeah. And I feel like if someone can do that and talk, talk like that to their parents about me, it means I did something great, you know. It doesn't have to be the Grammys or whatever, something like that. Just uh, impact, impacting someone's life, you know. What or who do you miss most while you're stuck at home? Man, I think like there's a lot of things that I took for granted when I was like when freedom was out there for us, you know. Now I, I just miss walking around. I miss going to like walking around Singapore tourist attractions like Gardens by the Bay. I miss going to town, um, going to the beach. 
I, I had so many opportunities to go to the beach back then. My friends kept asking me. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Now I'm like, man, I miss the beach. Man. I need to go to the beach real soon, you know. So definitely just miss going out and eating out. That's one activity I felt like in quarantine I missed the most. I can't be stuck at home for too long. I feel like an yeah. animal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah, that is nice go. mood right there. Exactly. For me, it feels like we are in a cage. Because our houses, yeah. like we live in HDB, so it's like very small. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anyways, uh, moving on. What's your favorite cuisine? Oh, this is hard, but I would say Japanese, just because Ooh, of like so good. yeah, just just so I love I love the sashimis and also because um, during quarantine I'm on my own like fitness journey right now. You know I've been cutting a lot of fried food and so on and so forth. So yeah, seeing the progress and everything, I feel like the best cuisine for me to eat right now is Japanese because it's healthy too. You know, and it goes along with the whole fitness plan. Mm. So, Tupac or Biggie? Oh, Tupac. I love Biggie because his lyricism is insane, but Tupac has some sort of impact on the masses that I feel like it's very hard to replicate in the modern day hip hop. I mean, the modern day world right now, you know, because everyone's so sensitive. But Tupac is definitely, for me, impact wise, on another level. Other than rap, a music genre you enjoy? RB. Always. I always listen to RB. I even have an RB single coming, so let's, go, let's see how it goes. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait too. <laughs> okay, one final question. What is your favorite song to perform of all time? No, when I was thinking so hard just now, I was like, damn. <laughs> if you guys ask me this, what would I say? Um, I would say it's All You Need because All You Need for me was a song that I did and it was about a past relationship about how, you know, the lack of uh, meeting up and communication and everything really took a toll on me. And, you know, my mind is telling me to break up, but my heart is telling me to stay. So with that song, I think it's very personal. I had people tell me that they cried to that song before too. So to me, like that song is it hits on another level. And when I perform it, I, I hear people sing it back to me too. You know, and I hear people rapping the lyrics too. So it tells me that that song has achieved some kind of, um, I don't know, personal comfort for these people. And when they hear it, they want to just you know sing it with me. You know, so for me, it should be all you need. You know? Even though it's not a hype song, I, will, I love jumping around and stuff, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I love pulling heartstrings more, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> That's really okay. cool. Yeah, it is. And uh, thank you so much. We have come to the end of the interview. And thank you so much for coming on uh, this part of your busy schedule. Thank you. It's really and fun. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Uh, we hope that you have fun in NS and stay safe in NS. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And to all our listeners out there, please um, support Exo Breezy and listen to his latest track, latest track yeah. uh, Leap of Faith, out on Spotify. And once again, thank you so much, Exo Breezy, and we wish you all the best. Thank you guys for having luck, me man. and appreciate coming back on here. Thank you so much. I hope to come back the next time I single drops again. Let's go. And we hope thank to see you. you next time too. Thank you. Thank you.